We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These words from the Declaration of Independence are familiar to many of us, and yet it took 143 years for women to get the right to vote, and 189 years for black people to get the right to vote. And still today, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are still only words for many people. Here in Boston, Life expectancy varies by 30 years, depending on where you live. In Roxbury, with many poor and black people, life expectancy is 59 years. In the Back Bay, wealthy and mostly white, life expectancy is 91 years. It's tough to have liberty when you are in prison. The United States incarcerates 716 people for every 100,000 people. Our rate of incarceration is more than five times higher than most countries in the world. Millions of people in our country don't have health care, a decent job, good education, a home they can afford, and that makes it pretty hard to pursue happiness. So on this show, you are going to meet people who are making it possible to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. People today who are making the words of the Declaration of Independence come true. Hi, my name's uh, Michael Jacoby Brown, and I'm your host of We Hold These Truths. And we're very honored and privileged to have Gertie Lahan, a colleague and friend of mine here as our guest. Gertie, uh, welcome to We Hold These Truths. And I, uh, I'd like you to say a little bit about your background, uh, where you were born and what your family was like and where you got the values that you hold today. Thanks. Thank you for having me, Michael. Sure. And uh, I'm, I was born and raised in port au prince Haiti. And um, mm. just being a Haitian, really make me have this extra zest to do things right. But um, I was raised by um, a gentleman, my father, mm. my role model. Mm. He would, um, we were well off. Mm. He was working because I think he was a, a mother. He's, he had 11 brothers and sisters. Wow. So his dad passed away in his early age. So he had to go to learn um, to be a mechanic. And all his life, he worked as a mechanic for the Haitian American Sugar Company. Mm. And on the side, he was selling yes, construction um, materials. And so we were really well off. Mm. But um, like my cousins will come to the US or to Canada to study, but he will always say to us, I am able to send you anywhere else to, um, to learn more about the world, but mm. I want you to know about yourself first. Mm. And I want you to know who you are, to be comfortable about who you are, mm. and not to identify yourself with anyone else. Mm. Then you can go and travel the world and mm. bring back, make sure you never make somebody else's home your home. Mm. So you have to go and bring back what is missing, mm. but never identify yourself with somebody else. And mm. no one in this earth is above you. No one in this earth no is one above you. Is above you. Yeah, and you've uh, put that into action in your life. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit more about some of the things you've done both here and in Haiti. <clears throat> I have tried to do yeah. a lot. Well, you have. Um, I have. Um, I have to thank a lot of people that I met here too. Mm. And I don't know if I can say that um, the late Paul Farmer mm. was a really good friend and supporter, like a brother. Wow. And I um, was able to meet uh, Father Jerry Osterman to GBIO mm. and okay. Lou Fenfer. Mm -hmm. And I have an old friend now, I have Robert Patton. Mm. And I have Tadeu Smiles, and now I'm oh. working with um, Jen Wempler from MIT, right. who has started uh, the Renaissance Project with us mm -hmm. to rebuild Haiti after mm -hmm. the earthquake of 2010. And I've never left uh, the group and, and the team. 
and we are still working because milking also helped mm. a lot. And I was able to take milking to Haiti with um, Bishop Frank Kelly. Mm. Then they were just there to see what I was trying to do because I had started a uh, school, mm. a school there and a fishing co-op. Really? A school and a fishing co-op? And co a fishing co-op. And the school will have the um, <coughs> going fishing and, and the, how they have academic. And I was able to travel also with a lot of MIT students when I was working at the Haitian li liaison mm -hmm. for, yeah, for, for MIT. And I was with the D-Lab um, professor, Amy Smith. So mm. we, we did that for many years. And mm. I would travel every six months with the MIT student to go a look of what is needed there. We will live with uh, at least 10 days with families, and then we will go back and implement whatever we see the people will need. And mm. we were doing a lot of one-on-ones, but what was most needed when I did the first school in Petitans was that the, the fishermen didn't have the way to send their kids to schools. Mm. So we had to have a, our own school. Mm. And then after that, we were able to, and they still, it's still running. The school is still there, still wow. running. So when, um, when I took Mel <laughs> there and, and, and um, Bishop Frank Kelly, they both still remain very much mm. involved. Mel had helped me with uh, the help of uh, some of our students to send down some um, outboard motors. And I mm. was having my fishermen to build their boat. And we were able to launch also, Mel helped me with that, to launch uh, def uh, deforestation, mm. uh, tackle the deforestation, like a reforestation program. And we will have some little parts where we will um, grow uh, whatever our fishermen will go, take and go sell in the Tox Island and then their way back, they'll do the fishing. Mm. So, and the kids also will learn uh, how to, to fish. And um, we work on everything, even we had another friend of Father Jerry Osterman called Bill, William Dolan, who has started the GOAT project in Haiti. The what project? GOAT. Project yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I was in the North End in Petitans and Father Jerry had the St. Boniface Haiti Foundation uh, mm. program in the South. So mm. Bill Dolan was working with him in the South with the good project that is doing yet now wonderfully. Oh, really? Huh. Yes. And then uh, so when Mel came back, he wanted to remain involved. Not only he helped me with the, the, to do Harvard student with the, the outboard motors, but also he started a school in Haiti. So mm. that has been running for 10 years now. Wow. And now Jen Wempler, uh, MIT professor of architecture, he's, we try to have him to adjust the program that he did for us for uh, to rebuild Haiti because we were supposed to start in Arcaia in a village, mm -hmm. sustainable village in Arcaia. So now we're trying to adjust the program to make it fit Mel's need now. That's what we're working on, and mm -hmm. we're going to have a campus for Mel School. Oh, and that's uh, great. yes, yes, and quite a bouquet. Wow, yeah, great. so we're doing a lot. You always, are. Right, always. and you've also done a lot here, I know, in Boston. I know for many years, you, when we first met, you were a leader in. Uh, the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. Mm -hmm. And I know there was, you know, that was complicated. There was good, bad, and ugly, and different things. I wonder if you can just tell us a little bit about what your experience was like, especially as a black woman, a Haitian woman, in what started out as a mostly, obviously, white organization. And what was some of the experiences you had there? and GBIO, the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. Uh, yeah. After I lost my, the first home that I was able to buy when mm -hmm. I got here, and um, I um, went to Maha just to learn uh, the, about the soft second yeah. so I can help other people not to get to what, what I went through. And that's how I met Lufenfer because uh -huh. I, he was upstairs from right. Maha. 
and then he was the the first person who told me about GBIO. Mm -hmm. And then that was to me the dream come true because mm -hmm. I was saying, okay, this is what we should be doing mm -hmm. to help people to to because no one can do for you better than you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. So and I was saying, okay, this is what I'm looking for because mm -hmm. I want to tell people about me and I want to tell people that I am a fighter and I want to tell people that I'm not going to quit. Right. So, <laughs> so right. And so when I found GBIO, that was the answer to my prayers. So I didn't think GBIO needed me. I needed GBIO. Mm. And I, um, I got involved in every committees and everything. Um, I was um, going every Sunday with Father Fan, uh, NS Wizangoga, and Lou Fenfer to go and invite other parishes to become mm -hmm. members of GBIO. And we did that for many I think over a year, I think. Mm -hmm. And then also the one-on-one -on -one campaign that was having me, giving me, I should say, the opportunity to talk to people and understanding where they come from and what the mm -hmm. problems are and mm -hmm. what we can do together. So that was, for me, that's it. And... That was the good part. You that also was, said... That, that's always a good part. Right. We are human. Right. So, in... Um, but I saw also, I met my pastor to GBIO, to a meeting. And I would have to go every Sunday to my church from first service to the last, mm -hmm. because I have to present about GBIO, and we have to do the one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, meetings, and then we have to have uh, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of, um, every, every Sunday. So right. I was there every day, but I, I would see them calling and having called the organizers, the white organizers, to go to the rectory to have dinner with the priest. I was never called in with my kids. You weren't called in? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. I would stay in the back of the church huh. and sitting down and go to the little uh, convenience store next door to get my, my kids something oh, right. to eat, but never was called to have anything to eat, to the, eat. but no. the white organizers the, got yeah, to. But the white organizers, would, and even within GBIO, yeah. I felt that I was, sometimes I was invisible, especially when I went to my 10 day training in LA. You felt invisible? Invisible. What, what do you mean? Can you explain that? I would say that people can, they will call people to talk, but I think even if I would start talking, they ignore me. They would ignore me. And I feel mm -hmm. that they would give the men there more mm -hmm. kind of a way to express themselves than women. Mm -hmm. And for me being Haitian and black, so I was at the bottom, which I never have been before. In GBIO. In, yeah, within GBIO. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I felt that that was the same year. But I have to say that and it was some organizers, but uh, I, I would say that Lou Fenfer, I would say that uh, Reverend Hanemeyer, who passed, uh, John Hanemeyer, yeah, who just died, yeah, those are, and, um, there were a lot of great people mm. that I would say were role model to me, and that they, those are the people that have been just trying to push me because of their ideas and what they have done, especially mm. Lou Fenfer, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and Jean Drake. Oh, blessed memory. That's his no, memory. Yeah. So I have had, and then when I put in the balance and say, okay, I have to do this for myself. I'm not going to go anywhere. That's first. But when I said, okay, those are the people who really, they, they have their heart in the good place, but they don't know how to really act around black people maybe. Mm -hmm. So, and I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to try to change them. If I cannot change them, I leave it the way it is, but I'm going to do for me what I'm here to do because I find great support within the organization. And that was the, right. the, the most important to me. Right, and sometimes you said in the actions you were put forward in a way that wasn't, you told me, uh, comfortable for you or what you would do that wasn't respectful of you. I wonder if you can Describe that in more detail. I know we've talked about that in the past. Yes, I have 
people sometimes will ask me, okay, do you think you're the... You, they, they would tell me, okay, you've been used as a token. And I felt that. You felt used as a token? As a token, because they, I think they uh, feel that they want to show that they're working with minority. Mm. So putting me in front and uh, really will show that to people. Putting you in front? Yeah. Can, can you describe a story or an instance when that like, might have I happened? I feel like going to the state house, for example, mm. and presenting and talking to political officials. Sometimes I got intimidated because I feel that they were looking down on me. Who was looking down on you? A lot of them. I mean, who? Most the, of them. The state house? The state house, yeah. Even some black folks. Mm. Yeah, because they feel, oh, okay. And um, some of them said, okay. Uh, one of them said, you, you, I would, it said, oh, you're just only following people. And I said, yeah, I have to follow to learn. Mm -hmm. Because I know when to follow and when to lead. And that's mm -hmm. what a good leader is. Mm -hmm. and, and when they will tell me, say, so you think you are the star of GBI? I don't know I'm not the star of no place. Because I want for people to know who mm -hmm. I am and to just respect me. Mm -hmm. I, don't want, I, don't, I don't need to be no star. Mm -hmm. And when they will tell me that I am being used as a token, and I said, yes, I know. But mm. when a token open the door, so I step in first. Mm. Mm. So I'm there too. So how were you used, uh, as you say, as a token? Mm -hmm. What did, what happened in those cases? Or could you describe that in some detail? Or When you feel that you don't belong somewhere, mm. but you, they accept you there because of the color of your skin mm. or what you represent, mm. because I will always tend to tell people, okay, this is what I stand for. Mm -hmm. And so I think they like that. It is good for them. But at the same time, they feel that they have to accept you. Mm. That's the way I felt. But in some cases, but even to some organizers within GBIO, did not accept us. That's how I felt. You didn't feel accepted? No. I mean, what I, did they do or say that led you to feel not accepted? It's just, as I told you, the look. <laughs> yeah, the look. What's, give me the look. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like when you walk in and they look at everybody else and everybody is uh, welcome and they look at you like, did you get lost or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And right. they say, oh, it's you. Yeah. Or maybe talking to you like I don't speak English. I don't speak English. I know that. But you speak English fine. I can understand <laughs> every word you're saying. Yes, and that's but my when, first language. I yeah, know it's not your first it's language. It's not mine. So yeah, okay. when people are just trying to explain things every time to you, yeah. like making you feel like, okay, are you insulting my intelligence? Because yeah. I may don't speak English, but I'm not dumb at all. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So it is. Um, so, so how would they speak to you? Why don't you like role play it for me? Give me like. Uh, uh, wh wh what would it sound like? Oh, um, can you do this? Uh, if I explain that to you, will you be able to do that? Oh, really? Yeah, will you be able to do this? Or oh, do you get it? And they will come, or they do their things with everybody else, and they will come to you. Do you need help? And I said, no, if I had need any help, I will come to you, believe you me. Ask. Oh, yeah, uh, right. yeah, because... Yeah, I'm here to really hmm. do for myself. Right. So, yeah. Here yeah. to do for yourself. You yes. don't need anyone yeah. to do for you. Oh, no. Uh, right. Oh, no. And I don't really want to stand in the way either. Right. Yeah. So what would you tell uh, uh, organizers, especially perhaps white organizers and black and brown and every kind of organizers are the important things to uh, learn from you know, all your experience uh, as a leader and an organizer and someone who's, what are the lessons that you think are really important for people that want to work for justice to uh, take on, to, to learn, and what are those? The first and most important thing mm. is to f forget about yourself mm. and then <clears throat> to look at what is best for the majority. Mm. And then also 
respecting and knowing and learning everybody's point of view mm. and see how we can not deny no one but bring all ideas together and sit down and talk about it and see how we can with then do something with everybody's input mm. i think this is the way because if i have to talk to anyone and they will go with something else i can accept mm. that but if it is just a pattern where well, what i said or idea that i will bring was never bring brought up to mm. the whole group then and i feel that i'm not part of this team mm. so the first to feel have to have people feel included mm. and to feel that okay you may not understand everything but to give yourself some time to learn mm. and showing that you're really learning mm -hmm. and you really bringing like if you talk to me about something and with that we didn't discuss i think it is it uh, make me that would make me feel good if in the next meeting you will say we were talking about this issue mm -hmm. and we would like to discuss more mm -hmm. yeah so let people know that their ideas Mm. really mad mm -hmm. yeah so you forget about okay what you're bringing and try to learn more than have mm. bringing your own idea because mm -hmm. when you're an organizer you go to a place even if you you know a lot about the issue mm -hmm. but s listen to what other people have to say and how they feel right. and even how they want to tackle the issue right yeah mm -hmm. that that you learn a lot because i can tell you having to travel to haiti and working with youth i have learned so much mm -hmm. i've learned so much from my kids here right yeah, yeah because they will tell me right. exactly how things are and how they feel and what they want to do about it what right. was the 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 team for gbio yeah right yeah so that's i think that's the that's the way we should do it yeah, yeah. Is, is there other things or other things you think uh you've learned that you want to make sure other perhaps younger people understand and practice to get involved hmm. what do you mean to get involved like um what? i feel that most of the time people like myself they don't think they can make a difference mm. and they see the issue and they say it's a problem mm. but for me it's an adventure mm. get involved and it's not going to be easy mm -hmm. yeah because you have to be a fighter yeah well, you have you yeah, you have no, to I be understand. a fighter there is no choice and that because us as black people mm -hmm. we got no choice Yeah, right. it's a struggle every day. So we have to. So, so how do you get involved? If you tell someone to get involved, where do they go? What do they do Monday morning or Tuesday morning when they wake up? Yeah, they should be. Um, you have a book. Well, that yeah. scene that is a, a Bible to me. Well, yeah, thanks, that can yeah, and um, but also you can talk to other people. You don't uh, have to have. To, you can you don't have to have a place to go and say okay I want to be involved you just talk to your friends just bring them over for just, yeah you talk to whatever. your friends to okay. say okay this is something that bothers me what do you think we can do about it great that this is, is something that it. bothers me what do you think what we do, can we do, can do, do about, about it not i but no, we no no it's always we right always we yeah and and then you you listen And you start when things are getting more organized. You start taking note, and then you're mm -hmm. inviting other people. And because the same problem that other maybe rich people and white people have, we have them too. Yeah. And more so that it's about time that we do something. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so invite people yeah. over. Probably going to serve some food and drink, right? Definitely. Right. What kind of food or drink, especially oh. you know? I would ask my guests, what do you like? What do you like? Right. What do you like? Because I, if it's for me, I will always have my Haitian food because that's go. the best. Well, I like it too, right? Yes. <laughs> And bottled water, right? Of course. Right. Of course. Right. 
of yeah, course. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, are there, is there anything else that you think? We just have a couple minutes left with this uh, show that you think are important for people who want to work for justice uh, uh, should do or think about? What, what else? I think it's about time <clears throat> for white folks mm -hmm. and to be allies mm. to us, with us to say, okay, if you really a fan or just stand for justice, you have to understand the way the work was now is just not unacceptable. It's totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And I feel, as I said before, I want to fight a good fight but I want to see results. Mm -hmm. And I feel that now it's, everything is getting even worse. Mm -hmm. And I know racism is out there and really bad, but for you to think that I don't have the right to be, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -mm. Okay. No one have that right. And not also I will be and I will remain and I will live life, and, but I want for you to get out of the way because I want to do for myself mm -hmm. what I have been doing for you. Thank you. Thank you, Gertie. Well, we're real lucky to have Gertie Lahans, who's been an organizer for, oh, what, 50 years mm -hmm. or at least, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, yes. I don't have to say uh, what year you were born, but you've been through a lot and done a lot. Yes. And I'm That's Michael right. Jacoby Brown. I'm your host for We Hold These Truths, Gertie Lahan. Uh, there's a movie about Gertie, Gertie's Roots. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Gertie is spelled G-E-R-T-H-Y, mm -hmm. Roots, like Roots of a Tree. It's, uh, how long is it? I've seen it, 15? Yeah, uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Uh, minutes. It's a great little movie about some of Gertie's work in Haiti. Gertie's Roots, uh, about Gertie Lahan. Uh, of Boston here and thank you very much for coming on we hold these truths it's great to see you again thanks for making the trip to the wilds of Arlington and uh, thank you for watching uh, again I'm Michael Jacoby Brown your host for we hold these truths and we hope to see you next time we're on thanks a lot for watching and thank you for having me thank you for coming <laughs> <laughs>